Very good morning, Follow Me Church, and now young people, our beautiful little children. I'm just so excited to be here this morning and to talk to you all again and share God's word. Um, this was a message that God strongly put upon my heart a couple of weeks ago, and more so this week. And it's um it's a topic that is hardly spoken about. Um, but a tough topic, if not taken the right way, can also cause offense. So I want to pray this morning, um, as Pastor John prayed, that this message will bless you all. I'm going to also pray now. I pray that you'll join me. Uh, I'll close your eyes and just let the Holy Spirit just minister to you this morning. And we just ask the Lord to intervene, to, to show us, to show us our ways, that we may correct our ways and come back to him. This, these are the times of repentance, of coming back closer to God, not going away from him. So join me, church, as, um, as we still our hearts in the presence of our mighty God. Father God, we worship you. We are so thankful, Lord, that we can still speak your word, even in these days. I thank you, Lord, that nothing can stop your word from coming to pass. Nothing can stop your purpose and your will from being completed. And Lord, I commit this message that you have put upon my heart this morning. It has been a burden and today when I speak it, I know, Father God, that I will speak it as you have asked me to. And I know that my work has been done. So I thank you, Jesus, that you are here in our midst, in amongst every one of us who are watching today. I pray, Father, that not just Follow Me Church who are online today, but everyone across who are watching across the world today will examine their hearts. And you say that you are a God who, who loves us, that you're a God who forgives us and restores us. And this is what we ask for for this morning. Search our hearts, Lord God. Let this, if there's any way in us that is wicked or away from you, I pray for a true repentance this morning. Draw us, Lord, to that point where we recognize the issues, that we may confess it with our mouths and be set free forever in Jesus' name. Thank you for your blood that covers us. Thank you that in you there is hope, there is salvation. So, Father, we love you. We give you this time. Have your way in every one of us, Lord God. In your mighty name we pray, amen. And Lord, I take authority right now and by every spirit of offense, every spirit of witchcraft that might be operating against us and against your word being spoken this morning. And I pray, Lord God, for victory in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I have something to read to you this morning, church. And, and I don't really know who actually wrote this. But I thought it's pretty um, apt for the message that I have this morning. This is what it says. Who am I? I have no respect for justice. I maim without killing. I break hearts and ruin lives. I am cruel and malicious. I gather strength with age. The more I am quoted, the more I am believed. I flourish at every level of society. My victims are helpless. They cannot protect themselves against me because I have no name and no face. To even track me is impossible. The harder you try, the more elusive I become. I'm nobody's friend. Once I tarnish a reputation, it is never the same again. I can topple governments and I can ruin marriages. I can destroy careers. I can cause heartache and sleepless nights. I can wreck churches. I can separate Christians. I spawn suspicion and I generate grief. I make innocent people cry on their pillows. Even my name hisses. My name 
is gossip. All the sins of the tongue, church, are deadly. There are various types of sins that the Bible talks about. Profanity, insults, lying, negative, negativism, constant complaining, criticism. All these are sins and they are harmful. They're harmful to the people that we live with. They're harmful to the church of Christ where it is evident. I've not come across a church or a pastor who said that gossip does not exist in their church. But gossip is a particularly deadly sin. It has destroyed people. It has tarnished reputations, broken friendships, and even split churches. Unfortunately, I was a part of that when I first came to Australia, where I actually witnessed a church disintegrate because of gossip. Gossip is quickly told, it's quickly heard, and it's quickly spread. Worst of all, gossip is quickly believed. People will confess to theft. They may even confess to adultery and to murder, perhaps. But it's very hard to get somebody to confess to gossip. And that's why your talk shows today on television, your glossy magazines that have all the gossip, are so popular amongst people. They may not be true. They may, not be, they may be partially true. They might be even a smidgen true. But they're very popular because the rest is gossip. And Proverbs says a very important thing. It says gossip is like a tasty mouth of food that you put into your mouth. And then you swallow it and it goes to the innermost part of your body. And it sits there and it regurgitates out everything that you have put in. It's like, for example, eating yummy ice cream. It's so good, isn't it, to have yummy ice cream? Or even beautiful whipped cream on some sticky date pudding, yum. So when I look at gossip, I look at gossip in such a way that it's so tasty because it's so engaging. We wanna, we wanna listen to more of it. But as soon as we start to take it, Proverbs says it sinks into the bottom. It goes into the innermost parts of our being. And then it starts, we start to speak it out. So there are six diseases of the tongue the Bible talks about. Six diseases. Diseases because they need a cure. Diseases because they bring death if they're not dealt with. The first one is idle words. They're just, just nonsense words. I used to be like that when I, before I came to know Jesus Christ. Just, just nonsense. I had to change my ways that my mouth would not speak idle words because the, because the Bible is clear that it leads to death. Gossip is there in that list. Flattery, you know, constantly just praising somebody for the sake of it. Excessive talking, where you just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk about your accomplishments and everything else and talk about the whole world and everyone's problems, etc. Excessive talking. Lying is a disease. And hastiness in speech, where you've listened to something and you've jumped right in. Today, I want to focus on one disease, gossip. I call it a disease because it truly is. The Bible says it is death. It can bring death. And there's only one medication. And that medication is the Lord Jesus Christ and his blood shed on Calvary for us. So what is the definition of gossip? It comes, when you look at the Greek word for gossip, it literally means a whisperer, someone who whispers. And it's found in Romans 1.29, where Paul is actually preparing the Christian church. He's saying to them, do not have any of this in your church. Do not have any of this when the people of God are together. He says that people are being filled in verse 29 with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, 
covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and whisperers. He includes gossip in that unrighteous state of the church. A person who whispers behind your back with the intention to hurt you is what the dictionary says is gossip. There's nothing good that they can say, but they find fault in everything that you do. A Greek scholar, Godet, once described a gossiper as someone who pours out his poison by whispering into the ears. Today, it's even more. All you need is Facebook to see who talks about who. All you need is an SMS. Previously, you could even talk behind people's back. They do it even till today. But today, we've got to be careful that what we send through social media often depicts the lifestyle of the person and the thoughts of the person. Gossip can happen in all ways. And we as a church need to be prepared to identify it, to address it, and to put a stop to it. So there are some characteristics of gossip that I want to talk about this morning. The first one is the one who gossips is doing the devil's work for him. In other words, you are working on behalf of the devil. In Leviticus 19.16, it says, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among your people. This is God speaking to us. He's saying to the church, you shall not be a talebearer going between people and speaking about people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor because I am the Lord. You know, in some versions it says, do not be a slanderer. Going about spreading slander, for instance, such as is, is idle talk, untrue, untrue words or partially true words, exaggerated from that partially true words, malicious talk is gossip. You know what Satan's title in the New Testament is? They call him the devil. And in Greek, the devil is the slanderer. He keeps going in and talking about you to Jesus. Look at him. Look at his lifestyle. That is the root meaning. So if you gossip or tell tales, you are actually doing the devil's work for him. Wow. So I had to ask myself, am I a representative of Satan or am I a representative of God Jehovah, the Lord Jesus Christ? Who do I stand for? Because church, we need to be careful not to give out of our mouth to gossip. Equally, we have a responsibility not to receive gossip, not to give out and not to receive. In Jeremiah 18, 18, when people wanted to get rid of Jeremiah because he was a man of God and he was, he was the, and God had told him, go and prophesy against my people. When Jeremiah was there, the people actually said in Jeremiah 18, 18, it is possible to kill him. And how are they going to kill him? It says, then they said, come, let us devise against Jeremiah. In other words, let us plan and plot against him. And then when you read on in verse 18, it says, come, let us smite him. In other words, let us kill him with the tongue and let us not give heed to any of his words. In other words, even if he tries to justify himself, even if he says that God told me to say this, we are not going to listen to that other part. We are just going to kill him with the words from our mouth. Many churches have died because of gossip. Church, when I wrote this, I didn't write it just because I felt like writing it. It was a real burden and I'm trembling as I speak this to you this morning because I truly believe that God is asking me to let you know that the only thing that our mouths must confess is his glory. I believe the Lord is saying to us that we need to be so on fire for Jesus 
that nothing that grieves his heart and his soul and his spirit should ever come out of our mouths and out of our lives. 1 Peter 4.15 says, A busy body is like a murderer, a thief, and an evildoer. This is what the word scripture says. It's not my words, it's the Bible. It says, But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or, and you can underline this if you've got your Bibles with you, or as a busy body in other men's matters. In other words, stay out of it. Pray, encourage with love, and let the Lord do the rest. The second thing about gossip, gossip can be indulged in and it can actually consume you. It can become the whole part of you. For example, you might start off with something that's partially true and it becomes, it escalates and exaggerates so much so that you start to believe that what you are saying is actually the truth. Proverbs 18 verse 8 says, gossips are like choice morsels. In other words, morsels of food. You know, you, you look at it, I said that in the beginning, you look at it and you look at it and you say, it's so yummy, it's so juicy because I, I want to listen a bit more. Just like how you want to eat something that's really nice and delicious. You want to eat a bit more and you go back a second time, you go back a third time and you know your weight's escalating and whatever's escalating, but you just enjoy it. And then it says in verse eight, in 18 verse 8 in Proverbs, it says, but those choice morsels of food, they go down into a man's inmost parts. Wow. I thought about that when I looked at this scripture. So every time I have listened to gossip, every time I have commented to somebody about somebody, really what I've done, I've taken gossip, I've put it into my mouth, and it has digested it, I've consumed it, and it's all inside me now, and it sits in the innermost part of my being. The words for gossip are, they are like choice morsels, choice morsels of food. The next time you enjoy your roast dinner, the next time you enjoy that delicious ice cream, the next time you enjoy that cream cake, remember what gossip looks like. They taste sweet, but they actually poison. I'm not talking about the cake, I'm talking about gossip. So Proverbs warns us, he says, man, Man is attracted to all these perverse attractions. Man loves to hear, oh, what happened there? Tell me. You know, Proverbs says, he wants, do not be corrupted, says the writer in Proverbs. Do not be corrupted by, the, if, by gossip coming into your lives. And you listen to it, it says it goes into the innermost parts. Cancer comes from the innermost parts right throughout. And gossip is likened to that, like a disease that comes in and plagues you. The third thing about gossip, it betrays confidence. When I say confidence, that means it betrays the friendship between people. What, I, what you have said to me in my deepest valleys, what you have said to me when I, when I was down and out, you have betrayed you have not been there to encourage me. You have not been there to lift me up. You have never walked my shoes. Now, in Proverbs 20 verse 19, again, this is not me speaking, it's God. It says, a gossip betrays a confidence. So avoid, I like this part, avoid anyone that talks too much. Wow. I had to stop and think. What were my words like and what do they reflect when I speak about people? So if you listen to Gossip Church, what the scripture is really saying is it not only betrays confidence, but it's saying stay away from them because when you include yourself in that gossip, you become an accessory to gossip. For example, in a legal term, someone might go and steal something and they come and give it to you. And you say, wow, that's great. And, they, and you know it's stolen goods. And you take those stolen goods and you put it up in your house and you admire it. But you know it's stolen goods. You become an accessory to the crime. This is where God's word is saying, 
Stay away from people who gossip because you become an accessory to that gossip because you're breaking people's confidence in you. Fourthly, gossip and slander are twins. They're like twin sisters. Psalm 15, I love this scripture. If you got your Bibles with you, I encourage you to please highlight it. Psalm 15 verses 1 to 3 says, O Lord, says David, who may abide in thy tent? In other words, who can even come into your house? Who may dwell on thy holy hill? In other words, who can even come to Mount Zion? Who can even enter into the city of the Lord where you reign? But here's the answer. He who walks with integrity and works righteousness and speaks truth in his heart. And then in verse 3 it says, He does not slander with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend. Three requirements from us to access God's presence. That we will be people who will walk with integrity. We will walk with truth. And if God's word says, do not gossip, you do not gossip. Secondly, you will walk, you will work righteousness. That means you will work for the good of the people. Not to condemn, not to criticize, and not to judge. But in love, encourage, and spur to greater things. Thirdly, it says the person will enter God's holy hill is a person whose truth rests in their heart. In other words, a person whose tongue does not speak lies, who does not speak slander, who does not run in hastiness. So there are three things we must not do. We must not slander. We must not do evil about our neighbor. In other words, the person next to me, my friend or my family. And we must not take up a reproach or receive a reproach against our friends. In other words, you should not carry a spirit of offense. Because you know why? God forgave us our most dirtiest sins ever. Who are we to hold judgment and condemn? You see, it is not enough for us to not slander, to not speak gossip. But church, the, you, we must listen to this. God's word is clear that we stay away from them. In other words, do not even receive the gossiper into your midst. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Because it's as soon as you receive the gossiper into your midst, you are receiving or becoming an accessory to the gossiper. That's why in Romans 1, 29 to 30, you can read about all the things that Paul says. Do not do this. Do not be covetous. Do, do not be filled with envy, murder. Do not be whisperers and do not backbite. In other words, do not talk behind the person. I want to say something to you. In the New Testament, gossip is equal to slander. Catalalos. It means to speak evil of someone. Because when we gossip, we speak evil about people. We badmouth them. And that's why Romans 1.30 calls it backbiting. You don't have the courage to say it up front or to address the issues. But we go around and we talk about it. So when we badmouth with gossip, we're actually biting them behind their backs. And we're talking. It's almost like dag putting daggers into their backs. And not addressing the issue and not even looking at how much is the truth, how much is compromised, and how much is actually lies. Do you know, church, this disease of gossip is actually normal in our society today. It could be in your workplace. It could be where you worship. It could be in your family settings. It's almost an accepted norm. But I want you as a church today to, ri to rise up and make a stance that where there is gossip, you will stop it in its tracks. Remember Dennis the Menace? He, he whispers, he goes to his neighbor and he whispers in the neighbor's ears. And this is what he says. He says, now listen good. I can only tell you this once because my dad told me not to repeat it. 
You see, that's how gossip is. Uh, whatever I say, I just do it in this situation. Proverbs 10, 19 says, When words are many, sin is not absent, but he who holds his tongue is wise. You know what that means? When words are many, in other words, you know, when you keep talking too much, you know, just, just non-stop, just talking, it says sin is not absent. You know what that means? That means sin is present. When, when, you, when you are amongst talkers and talkers and talkers, it, sometimes it turns into idle talk and nonsense that has no relevance. But, it, but God's word says, he who holds his tongue is wise. You know, often I, um, I get asked even <clears throat> at work, you know, Marie, you, you just hold your peace. Because I know that when God tells me to speak, I will speak. But I also know that I've got to seek God before I open my mouth. But I also know that God is my defense. God fights my battles. My trust is in him. So church, Ecclesiastes 5, 1 to 2 says, guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Now this is us going into the house of God, going to worship God. Listen to what Ecclesiastes says, the preacher. He says, go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know what they do wrong. Are you with me, church? Sometimes we go into church or we go into prayer meetings complete with our agenda. God, this is how we're going to direct this prayer meeting today. God, this is how the service is going to be directed today. You just come and sit here and we are going to tell you how it's going to run. In fact, we're going to tell the Holy Spirit at, at 10 to 10.30, you move. But at 10.30, the pastor comes on. I'm not saying that we do that at Follow Me Church. I'm just giving you an example of where the Bible says, even when you go into the house of God, go with such reverence because you're going to go to your maker, but you're going to actually listen to what your maker says. You're not just running in like fools. Like that's what it says. Do not offer the sacrifice of fools. But even at sometimes at prayer meetings, we can sort of offer a sacrifice of fools where we just mouth off and, and, and go into different tangents. But God says in his word, do not mouth off the sacrifice of fools. Go near to God to listen to him. So what is the root of the problem of gossip? What is it that's underneath all this gossip? It is a spirit of restlessness. James 3 verse 8 says, and James 3 verse 8, uh, if you turn with me to that, it says, no man can tame the tongue. And this is what he says, it is a restless evil. It's always restless, wanting to talk, wanting to jump to conclusions, wanting to speak things in hastiness, wanting to do things, wanting to criticize, wanting to talk about somebody else. And it is full of deadly poison. I didn't say that, James did. So the origin of gossip, the question is, where did gossip originate from? The word of God tells us that, that we need to stay away from this. So, so we need to find out where does it come from? And today morning, I want to ask you, church, and whoever's listening across the world, if you've been exposed to gossip in your lives or been part of gossiping or have been have had people come to you to talk about things that are only about other people, I want you today to make a pledge to the Lord to say, Lord, help me to stop this. You know, are you ready to do so? Because the first origination is gossip is fueled by hell's flames. It literally comes from hell. Gossip is one of Satan's fiery arrows that he shoots at us. And then he not only shoots it at us to receive it, and then he entices us to shoot it out at those people. And that's why the Lord was very, very firm when he was talking about the origin of gossip and the tongue. That's why in James 3 verse 6, another powerful scripture, it says, the tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It's a world of evil. Whether you like it or not, 
whether you've climbed the highest mountain for, for the Lord Jesus Christ or visited whatever you wanted to go and visit or, or build whatever you wanted to build, what is in your tongue defines the status of evil. It corrupts the whole person, not just your mouth, not just your, your, your face. It corrupts the whole person and it sets the whole course of his life on fire. And now I want you to look at this church. It says, and is itself, that means the tongue itself, is set on fire by hell. Wow. The flames of gossip are ignited by hell. Satan is directly behind every act of gossip. Directly, indirectly, when we give Satan a foothold in our lives, when we speak gossip, it's, it's Satan encouraging us to be his workers to speak against another brother or a sister and then there's an old saying it goes a gossiper is a devil's postman a gossiper is a devil's postman the second origination the first one it comes from hell the second one gossip originates from the evil in our own hearts Luke chapter 6 verse 45 says, Jesus is speaking, Luke 6 45, the, the good man brings good things out of the, of the good stored up in his heart and the evil man speaks evil things of the evil stored in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, what you start to well up in within your heart, whatever Whatever is being revealed to you in your heart, when you speak, if it is full of evil, it will speak evil. It will speak gossip. Whatever your heart is full of, that is what it will speak. So when we allow our sinful natures to control our hearts, even fill our souls, it starts to spew out of our mouth and it becomes dirty. But God says, I have anointed you. I have called you. I have chosen you. I have died for you. I've set you free. I have cleansed you with my precious blood. You are mine. We cannot have anything unrighteous, dirty, spewing from our mouths. The third thing, gossip can be as a result of hatred. You know, in Psalm 109 verse 3, King David said to his enemies, I, I, like he, he was talking, he was talking to God about his um, enemies and he says to God, God, with words of hatred, they are surrounding me. They attack me without cause. Have you ever felt that church where you've been under attack? You know, from A to Z to uh, everything, it has been a real hard journey. I'm sure David had many of those times where he just wanted to give up. You know, this little shepherd boy sitting on a hill, he could just go back and be that shepherd boy, look after his sheep, play the flute, play the harp, kill some, kill a wolf here and there, kill a bear when it comes to attack the sheep. That would have been a better life. But you see, when God chose him, when God set him apart, when God brought him out and God said, you are mine, David. You, I've got great things planned for you. What happened? His enemies rose up. Because his enemies hated him. Jealousy is a big part of gossip. Ephesians 4, 31 says, When we allow hurt, anger, bitterness, rage to live in our hearts, we entertain the thoughts of hatred, retaliation, and revenge. In other words, how can I get back at you? How can I get back at you? The fourth originating is gossip is a product of idleness. You know, my mom used to say something to me. Um, an idle mind is a devil's workshop because it's got nothing good in it. It just sits there all day and thinks about things that are unwholesome. 1 Timothy 5.13 says, because they get into the habit of being idle, I love this scripture, and listen to what it says, and they go about from house to house, yeah? So they go from this house, they go to another house and another house and another house, and they become, what I said before, the devil's postman. 
because he loves post men who would go around from house to house. And then it says, and not only do they become idlers, but also gossips and busybodies, saying things that they ought not to say. You know, my people with much time on their hands can become busybodies and gossips. So what is the trouble with gossip? What is the trouble with gossip? You know, why, why can't we root it out? Because gossip is always trouble. Wherever there is gossip, Wherever there are gossipers, you are bound to have trouble. I told you before, um, I first time I evidenced a church split up because of gossip. Gossip obscures the truth. Gossip drives us away from God. We start to focus on carnal things and, and on, on, on people rather than keeping our eyes on God. Gossip ruins our reputation. Gossip destroys our relationships. And it even divides our churches. But the trouble of gossip is, church, it is highly, incredibly destructive. In fact, when I read James 3, verse 6 to 8 before, it says it's a, it's, it's a tongue. The tongue is like a fire. It not only just um, uh, pollutes what is uh, in, in the mouth, it pollutes the whole body. It's a restless evil full of deadly poison. In other words, it's like a bush fire that is out of control. Once you've let it out, that's it. It just keeps rolling and it gathers more and more and someone else adds something and someone else adds something. And by the end of the day, what started off as a small issue becomes a mighty mountain. And you can try to put it out. You can scramble to go back and you can try putting a water on it to, to stop the flames from, from escalating. But ultimately, a forest fire is like a forest fire that is beyond control. So not only is gossip a wildfire, gossip is full of deadly poison. But more so, church, I want to encourage you today because you are believers. You are believers. You, you, you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Gossip is a characteristic of non-believers. Because they don't know the love of God. They've never experienced the love of God. Romans 1, 29 to 30 describes the lives of wickedness of unbelievers who have shunned God out. And that's what Paul's saying. He says they've become filled with all kinds of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity, envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. Then, they, then he says they are gossipers and they are slanderers. They are God-haters. They are insolent and arrogant and boastful. In other words, why would I want to let my God down if that is what it's saying people who have shunned God look like? When we gossip, we talk about the people who have rejected Christ. We are showing, we are displaying our attitude. Thirdly, gossip spreads falsehood. In Ephesians 4.25, it says, Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truth to his neighbors because we are all members of one body. You see, church, when we, when we gossip, the facts to and reality is often distorted. Lies are spoken as truth. Even half-truths are exaggerated. They might have a little bit of truth in it, but not everything is true. And gossip often comes with a ton of lies heaped onto it. So people who are giving in to gossip often have this attitude. Don't bother me with the facts. My mind is already made up. Church, are you listening to this? It says, people, I want to I bring this up to you. Uh, even as a pastor, even as um, de dealing with all kinds of, even not even as, not even as a pastor, even as a normal member uh, living in the community, when you try to justify something to someone, it says, "What we're listening over here, there's a falsehood with gossip, and it says, it's almost like the person that you're trying to justify your very reason and your existence is, don't bother me with the facts." My mind is already made up. You know that's a dangerous position to be in? Because if your mind is already made up, then nothing is going to change your mind. 
And, and no matter what reasoning may come your way, you may go, I've made up my mind. I don't need to know anymore. But in the meantime, collateral damage is happening across families, across the church, across your workplace, wherever the gossip is stemming from. Gossip separates friends. Proverbs 16, 28, it says, a perverse man stirs up dissension. That means a, a, a perverse man, a wicked man, he stirs up conflict. He, he, he creates trouble. And a gossip separates close friends. You know, it, it only takes a few seconds of gossip to ruin a beautiful lifetime friendship. It only takes a few seconds of gossip to ruin a lifetime friendship. Church, people leave churches because of gossipers. People walk away from God because of gossipers. People leave uh, families because of gossipers. Churches have split because of one person who lit a fire. But I want to say it to you today, we as a church will moving forward stop every gossiper from gossiping in our fellowship and you may be listening even as a family member you know you may be experiencing that somewhere or even in your workplace and i'm speaking because i'm the pastor of follow me church but i apply this that that even wherever i am that i'm going to take up the stance that i am not going to allow gossip to be part of my ministry you know what proverbs 6 19 says a false witness speaks lies and he sows discord between brethren a false witness there's a story uh, church that is being told a grandmother was saying her bedtime prayers and her two grandchildren you know with her two grandchildren and she said tonight you're going to talk about sin and do you know what sin means and so the seven-year-old said grandma grandma it's when you do something bad but the four-year-old said, and I know what bad thing he did. Can I tell you about it? And that's exactly what gossip does. Oh, did you know that this is what happened? So what is the cure for gossip church? You know, I brought you through a journey. We identified that gossip originates from Satan. Gossip is a product of our sinful nature. It is incredibly destructive. It leads to death. But now I want you to consider what is the antidote for, for gossip. The first way to look at dealing with gossip. And I want you church, if you or anyone else listening to this have experienced it, going through it, are feeling hurt about it, Remember, as long as you've got to carry, you're carrying a spirit of offense, God cannot do anything in your life. So the first thing I want to tell you this morning, overlook the offense. Overlook the offense. Proverbs 17 verse 9 says, He who covers over an offense promotes love. In other words, if I have offended you through my gossip, but you come back to me with 100% love. I'm an overcomer. But whoever repeats the matter separately to a close friend is not doing it in love. Overlooking an offense is an act of love and Christian friendship. That's what it's all about. It's a sign of Christian maturity. You know, when you don't know Christ, you don't know salvation, and you don't know forgiveness of sins through the shed blood of Jesus, you want to go and bash that person over the head. You, you want to even like, you know, uh, fight with them or whatever you would normally do. Christians can be too thin-skinned because they take on board everything and they, they want to establish their stance and they want to say, but that's not how it happened. Blah, 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 blah. I want to say to you today, Grow a rhinoceros skin. Grow a thick skin. Because God is your defender. God is your fighter. Churches are families. Family members can upset other people. 
But don't be surprised when it happens because you're still dealing with human beings who are on a different level of maturity. It's easy to be quickly offended. And we, we too are quick to tell others how so-and-so did this to me and therefore I went here and I did that, etc. God's telling us today to overlook that offense. Bring it to him. Bring it to him. And love the person back 100%. If you must talk about the offense, talk to the person who offended you in the first place and to that person alone. Are you with me, church? I'll repeat that again. If you must talk about how offensive that was to you, talk to the person who offended you and to that person alone. The second thing, so you get over your offense because you don't, you cannot function with a spirit of offense. God cannot work when there's a spirit of offense. The second thing, don't listen to gossipers. You know what Proverbs 20 verse 19 says? A gossip betrays a confidence. So avoid a man who talks too much. Stop listening. Avoid that person. Avoid that person. Did you hear that verse? It says, avoid a man who talks too much. Don't even listen and entertain that gossip. Avoid the gossiper. When someone begins to gossip to you, tell them plainly today, I don't want to hear that any gossip, we don't want gossip hurting our church. We don't want gossip hurting our families. We don't want gossip hurting my workplace. I don't want gossip hurting anything that I do. Tell that person straight away. I'm not entertaining gossip. Don't worry about offending them. They need to hear that you are not going to entertain them because God's word says, Stay away from gossip. The third thing you need to do. So first is offense. The second one is don't listen to gossip. The third one is confront the gossiper. <coughs> if someone gossips about you, Jesus tells you how to confront them. Speak to the person in love one-on-one. -on -one. And even if they don't listen, then go and bring a couple of mature people. And then bring the church elders and sort it out. It's important that you confront, but confront with love. Speak the truth with love. That's what Ephesians 4, 4, 15 says. Speak the truth with love. And the fourth point I want to tell you this morning is watch your tongue carefully. Ephesians 4, 29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only, listen to this church, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, not your needs, not your, your expectations, not that you have done that and they haven't done it. No, 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 no. We, we get it wrong. We get it wrong. Even when we pray, we get it wrong. What God's word is saying here is, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only, listen to the words, but only what is helpful for building others up according to to Pastor Maria's needs. Let me read that again. I don't think the word of God said that. It says, according to their needs. What is their need at this point in time? That it may benefit those who listen. You see, church, when we go in love and we look at their needs, not anyone else's, their needs, where are they right now in their journey? How can I support them with love right now in their journey? I look at their needs and how do I spur them on? How do I encourage them? Do you know I've not got it right still? I'm, I'm a work in progress, mate. I'm a work in progress even towards this. It's easy, isn't it, to be quick with our tongue. It's easy to say, oh, you know, why can't we just get the act together? But God's word says, help them according to their needs. Not yours, not mine. Not because the pastor said so. Watch your tongue. You know, if, you're, if, you're, if your words are tearing people down and hurting them, God says, shut up. Keep quiet. Don't even speak. If you can't say anything, I remember my mom saying this too. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. You know, a man won million, a million dollar lottery. So he decided to take his wife to New York City for a weekend getaway. They had such an argument over how to spend the money that she threatened to divorce him that weekend. 
In a fit of anger, he climbed up to the Empire State Building. And then she ran up after him and she thought he was going to do something crazy and throw himself out of the building. But once she got to the top, you know, she, she said, Honey, I love you. We can work this out. Yeah. But by the time she reached him, he had torn the check into zillions of pieces and he threw it all over. They scrambled to pick up the pieces, but they couldn't get the check. It was too late. The wind had got to those pieces. That's how gossip is. Don't let it be too late that your tongue has caused someone to fall. Your tongue has hurt somebody. You know, Matthew says, I tell you, there'll come a day when every man will give account on the day of judgment for every careless word. This gives me goosebumps, church, that I, it says here that there'll come a time when I will stand before God on, ju on judgment day and, and I will have account for every careless word that I have spoken. If it is not of God, Father, forgive me, forgive anyone right now who's listening. And if it's, it's not of you, Father, forgive us. On that judgment day, let it be said that your words brought love. Your words were spoken in love. Your words were life to the soul of that person. You know what Psalm 141.3 says? Set a guard over your mouth. <laughs> I had a dog. He was had a big mouth. He'd walk around with a large coconut. Now in India, coconuts are quite big. He would walk for hours with a coconut in his mouth just for the fun of it. I looked, I looked at him and God said, set a guard over your mouth. You know, imagine getting your mouth and clamping your mouth down. And he says, oh Lord, keep watch over the doors of my lips. That's what Psalm 141.3 says. Lord, you, you come, God, you come, you come and you set a guard and then you, you, you keep watch over the doors of my lips, that, that my lips will be speaking love at all times. Here's a remedy in five steps. Recognize the problem. Recognize, you know, I, I had to come before God as well. I had to correct the way I think, I speak. And I said to you before church, I'm not perfect. I'm a work in progress. This message was equally for me. You know, like how, how quickly do I judge people? Do I put them in a box? I have to recognize where my problems are. I want to encourage you. You know, you, you, you are men and women of God, chosen, set apart, anointed to do ministry with, for God. You are set to worship and let not this mouth proclaim things that are profane. When you have to worship him, recognize that you have a problem. Confess and receive his forgiveness. Confess, God, I'm so sorry that I've hurt that person. Help me to pick up the phone today and to say, I am sorry. I, I shouldn't have spoken that. I should have dealt with that. You know, I, I, you know, can we have restoration? Pray with that person over the phone. Refuse sin. Refuse sin and yield to God. You know, decide to praise God with your lips. Let, let them say, Lord, take off the muzzle of my mouth that I might praise you instead, that the doors of my lips may praise you, not the other way around. And yield that you'll have a discipline in your life that says, I recognize Holy Spirit. Every time I recognize that someone is gossiping, that someone's talking about someone, or even when I'm about to say something, Holy Spirit, just come in and, and, and correct me straight away that I might know right from wrong. You know, church, Proverbs 15, 4 says, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, you know, a tree, but perverseness is a breach in the spirit. You know, if, if my tongue is good and it's full of life, you know, it brings good fruit. People I will not be sad and then grieved by what we do. But when you talk perverseness out of our mouth, God's word says it's a breach in the spirit. There's a, there's a big gap in the spirit. God needs to fix it. And you know, I want to leave you with this. Matthew 5, 14 says, Jesus tells us, you are the light of the world. Yeah. His statement there is about so much more than doing ministry. It's more than preaching, more than evangelizing, more than, more than, you know, standing at the street corners, more than passing out tracks. It's more than anything, church. You know, Christ tells us plainly, are you shining? People don't need to know what you are speaking to them. But just by looking at you, they should say, I want the light. I want what you have. Do you know, we, we, Eddie and me are, are so blessed at the moment. We've been ministering to someone who, 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 um, who worships all kinds of gods. 
and we 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 are there we are there for that person and it's so amazing that Eddie had an opportunity just this last week to minister to that person on the book of Revelation you see why because the person looks at your lifestyle and goes again church I'm not saying that we are perfect right so please don't this is only an example the person looks at your lifestyle and goes I can actually fellowship and, and I want what you have I want what you have the light should speak of God's love. The light should say, this is love. More than anything, even me preaching, even me evangelizing, even me writing things and, and, and handing it out and, and whatever it might mean, more than all that are people seeing the gentle spirit of God in you. Do you see what the Lord is implying here? The world recognizes those who walk closely with the Lord by how they carry themselves. Your neighbors, your co-workers, um, people you have daily communion with in Christ, you know, with Christ, you know, you, you're, they, they don't know that you pray 10 times a day or, or two times a day. They, they, they don't know that you've read your Bible in the morning. They don't know all that. But when they see you, they, they see you, they see Christ's light shining through you. They don't want to know what the paraphernalia. They just want what you have. That's an open door for Jesus. As long as nothing hinders that life, your light will continue to shine. Jesus says, I have put you church. I have put you my people. I have put you my anointed ones on an exhibition for the world to see. People are looking at you because I have made you a spectacle. You are light. And it is not meant to be hidden. You know, when Jesus is shining through me, I don't want to be hid under a bush. You know, I don't want to be covered up in a little barrel or something. I want my light to shine bright for Jesus. I want my light to say, you know, God, I want to be that city on a hill. I, I want to be the light that I hold up and say, Jesus. And everyone looks at that light and goes, she's got Jesus. It, it, it's, it's her faith. It's her God. It's, 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 it's him. He lives in her. I want to encourage you, young people, children, you know, don't, don't look at man. Don't look at your, the carnal things of this world. Is the light of Jesus shining in your communication? Can people truly come before you and say, you know, to you, I want what you've got? You didn't have to say anything. You just walked beside that person. In the low times, you walked beside that person. Even when they had nothing, you walked beside that person. When they were going through a horrible situation, you walked through that, you walked beside that person. But that person knew that Jesus lived in you. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I'm praying that we'll be able to minister more to our friend and lead him to Christ. You know, we didn't have to go out of our way to do anything. We were just who God asked us to be. And God is working amazingly. You don't have to go out of your way to do anything. Listen to what God's spirit tells you to do. When you do things of your own, you struggle. You, you, it's a restless journey. But when you do things the way God wants you to do things, it's an amazing journey. And then you just sit back and don't take any glory, don't take any credit, just let the Lord be glorified. And that's what that verse says, that they may see you and glorify your Father. No one should ever say, it was Pastor Maria who led me to the Lord. Or it was so and so that led me to the Lord. Or look at me and I preach, man, this is what happened. No, 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 no. In fact, they shouldn't have even seen you in the first place in terms of your physical uh, pushing of things or whatever you may be trying to do. What they see is the light of Jesus. And what they see in that light of Jesus is his salvation. And then it says that they may see and glorify your Father which is in heaven. They don't, don't look for the praise of man in anything that you do. Look for God. Look that people might see God in you. Church, I feel I've done 
what I had to do this morning. I just want to bless you today. It's a hard topic and very few people preach on the spirit of gossip. If I could preach on the seven deadly sins and include and, uh, you know, the, the uh, gossip, etc. and that, I would love to bring you a word every day on what God's saying of how refined our lives have to be. I gave you so many examples of the diseases that are in our mouth. Let us pray together. Holy Spirit, just minister to your people today. Minister, Lord God, be exalted, Father God. Be exalted, Lord Jesus. You are our mighty King. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in all of us. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, as David said, come. My enemies rise up against me, but God, you are my defender. You are my righteous judge. You are, you go before me and you speak for me. Father, fill us with your peace. Fill us with your peace. I want to pray for anyone who's carrying a spirit of offense this morning against anything that has been said towards them. Father God, I take authority right now and I bind every spirit of offense from manifesting in the lives of those who have received the spirit, this word today. Father, if they have been hurt, if they have been grieved previously by gossip and slander, Father God, I pray that they will turn to you right now and find the peace of God, that they will forgive, that they will forgive, they will forgive and the peace of God will reign supremely in their lives. Help them to be overcomers of every gossip, of every slander against them. Father, I pray right now that you'll fill their lives with such deep love, such deep love. Fill them, Lord, with your love that passes all human understanding. And Lord, as your love fills them, I pray that they, that you will shine, shine, Jesus, shine into their lives, that their lives will be ever seeking you. You will be the righteous judge. You will go before them. You will open doors for them. And every negative criticism, everything that has come across their paths, Father God, I, 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 re I rebuke that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we take the sword of the Spirit and we cut it off. It has no effect because they are chosen. They have been called. They've been set apart for your work. They've got great calling on their lives. So that I know, Father God, that nothing can change that. Father, let the light shine bright for you. And I pray now the peace of God upon every family member. And on every home, Lord, where there's strife between parents and children, between parents, between siblings, between friends, between um, members of our church or wherever. Father, I pray where there is strife, Lord, I pray that the spirit of strife will be arrested in the mighty name of Jesus. It will be arrested in its tracks and it will, it will be bound from manifesting even more. Father God, we pray and we cast it out in the mighty name of Jesus. Release your power, Lord. Lord, forgive us if we have entertained the spirit of gossip and the spirit of slander. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, we want to seek life. We want the truth because the truth sets us free. And we will be free, says your word. So Father, forgive us if we have entertained the spirit of gossip and the spirit of slander that has brought death into our spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way now. Have your way. Heal, heal, Lord. Heal every broken heart, every tear that has been shed, every sleepless night that a person has laid their head on the pillow and cried, every finger pointing, every backbiting. Heal, Father God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We thank you that we can turn to you and you alone. You are our God. You created all of us. You created all of us. And none of us were a mistake. None of us are a mistake. 
Father, I pray now for an anointing to be upon everybody's hearts, everybody's minds. The peace of God go before everyone this morning. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be vigilant. Be alert. The lion is prowling. The, the devil is prowling about like a lion. He wants to devour what calling God has upon you. But the Lord is saying today, my Holy Spirit will keep you alert and will keep you vigilant so that it will never be a surprise. You will be ready. You'll be ready. Come on, warrior of God. Put on your armor and stand. Make a stand today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.